What's up, everybody? My name's Chance, and today we're going to be playing an Orzob Witch's Cruel Corpse Familiar deck. <laughs> Terribly long name, um, because it has a lot of a lot of little inner working synergies to it. So, I'm going to try and rush through this deck tech or deck breakdown, although the cards are kind of concise in it, uh, the, the combos are not. So, before we go and hop into this deck tech or deck breakdown, I would like to remind everybody, if you enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like down below. It does help support each and every video. Um, if you have a comment on this video, future videos, or past videos, please leave it down below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. It is free and it's a great way to support the channel. Now, if you're looking to support the channel through a monetary means, you can hit the join button down below the video and it'll give you a list of perks you can acquire upon joining up with our, our memberships. And last but not least, if you're looking to pick up some magic cards while supporting the channel, you can head over to tcgplayer.com and use the promo code the new Dr. Spilliken. Now, onto this deck tech or deck breakdown. What are we playing? Why does it have such a long, complicated name? So I got to thinking today I wanted to play an Aristocrats deck and I wanted to I wanted to really break it. You know, I really, really wanted to break it. So I got to thinking about uh, Witch's Oven and Cauldron Familiar, how you can bring them back each and every single turn and which cards these work well with. And uh, well, here's the two obvious ones, Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant. So every time you sacrifice your Cauldron Familiar with Witch's Oven, obviously you're going to brought Cruel Celebrant. And every time you bring it right back, um, you're going to proc Corpse Knight. So essentially you're getting a double proc off of Cauldron Familiar plus the original proc of the Cauldron Familiar dealing the one damage. So you can get what? Two from it leaving and two from it entering, so four damage every turn just off of sacrificing this, which it is an infinite combo with Witch's Oven, so it's like absolutely insane. And then, you know, furthermore, if you have Tasted Down, you're looking at what, six damage a turn? Not to mention if you have multiple Cruel Celebrants or multiple Corpse Knights or, you know, yada yada yada. Now, the one area I will say this deck is kind of lacking is in removal. Um, we do have four copies of Murderer's Knight and two copies of Cavalier Knight. Uh, and then, you know, you do have Liliana down here in the later later end, but I wouldn't I wouldn't count on her as removal because like you know, it's it's not uh it's not guaranteed for one and you don't get to pick the creatures and you just never know with these circumstances. So maybe if you want to throw in uh, a spark harvest or uh, mortify, something along those lines, it would be perfectly fine and probably acceptable. Um, and would probably work perfectly fine in the deck. I just, y'all know I barrel in on my uh, my objective and I just pretty much stay there. So, we do have things like Orzov Enforcer and Hunter Witness to help us, uh, one, okay, two, two proc. One, Hunter Witness is great chum blocker, right? Two, it's gonna create two creatures, which is two creatures that get to enter the battlefield and two creatures that get to die, which procs Corpse Knight twice and Coral Celebrant twice. Um, alongside, sorry about that, I don't know what happened to my <clears throat> to my mouth and my words there, but similarly with Orzhov Enforcer, you know, two procs on each creature there, and it has Death Touch, so it's great at removing those really, really big creatures, or at least keeping them at bay. Then we do have Midnight Reaper for some card draw, and I will say this, before I added in Cavalier of Night, I had God Eternal Bond 2. Um, as far as which one I prefer at this 5 mana cost slot, I don't, I don't really know. Both of them have their upsides, both of them play pretty well. Um, I guess it's really just a matter of opinion and matter of which one you want to play. Uh, we do have two copies of Vindictive Vampire just in case our Cruel Celebrant uh, combo wasn't enough. And then we also have Command the Dreadhorde for some awesome Corpse Knight uh, Cruel Celebrant combos, you know. <clears throat> that being where you just bring back all your Corpse Knights and all your Cruel Celebrant slash other cards and have a great dandy time. Uh, furthermore, I would like to add, if you want to throw in uh, Kaya's Wrath, that would also probably be really, really good in this deck. Um, but again, the main focus for me was the Witches of Cauldron Familiar Corpse Knight Cruel Celebrant combo, which again, it's a mouthful, but it's an awesomely fun combo packed mouthful. So, we're going to go and hop into our matches without further ado. Rai Rai Naya. Nia? Ri Ri Nia? I don't know. Um, I would love to start with more than two lands in my hand game. Thank you. If, uh, if at all possible. Anyways, I would like to make a quick little side note. I did go back and throw in some Spark Harvest and uh, Kai's Wrath in the place of the Vindictive Vampires. I got to thinking about it, and uh, you know, we probably don't need the Vindictives. We have Cruels, we have Corpse, we have Cauldrons. We're, we're probably doing plenty of damage as far as that matter goes. 
but the deck was lacking some serious removal, so we'll try it out. If I don't like it, I can always go back, you know? it's That's the cool thing about magic decks, is as long as you have the cards and you, know, you have them forever, um, it's pretty easy to, to flip-flop around. So, our opponent's also playing a Witch's Oven deck. Interesting, interesting. Alright, so let's move, let's move our little kitty cat over to the side. And they're also playing Cauldron Familiar. Don't tell me it's a copycat deck. Here I am, feeling so goddamn original. And then you're just, just gonna rain on my parade and say, no, no, no. Actually, we're playing the same thing. <laughs> Alright, so, having two Corpse Knights means that if we draw into a Witch's Oven, with our Cauldron Familiar, we are going to be sitting pretty nicely. We'll have to wait and see though. Our opponent's already starting up the, the Cauldron Familiar Wombo of combos, and that's okay. Midnight Reaper. It looks like a very similar deck, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it though? Very, very similar. Alright, so we'll get down the Corpse Knight. I would like some more black mana, please, game. Poor Flavor. There's another Corpse Knight for you, buddy. They're going to be getting some card draw with their Cauldron Familiar slash Midnight Reaper combo. Do I want to swing it with my Corpse Knight? No. No. We got this. I, th I think I think we got this. I believe in us. I believe in the power of we. Alright, so Witch's Oven, Midnight Reaper, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Really a good combo. You know, hint, hint why it's in my deck. <laughs> um... It's interesting, though, that our opponent's literally playing, like, the exact same deck. Yeah, Cruel Celebrant, everything. Yes! I love it! Show me... Show me the good stuff. Um, yeah, so, interestingly enough, even though we would have had four mana if I played this other planes, we wouldn't have been able to play two cards. So, Witch's Oven, that is... Fine by me. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Magnificent. Right, because we have the Cauldron Familiar, we have the Corpse Knights, we have the Corpse Celebrants. We're about to be dealing the combos. All right, now our opponent is about to do their little combo, which is our little combo in reverse. So I guess we're just about to see whose combo is better at comboing, right? Also, we're going to be up to five mana next turn, which means we're we're just one away from Command the Dreadhorde. So if we can draw into our Kai's Wrath, then Command the Dreadhorde, we can get all of our creatures back while wiping all of theirs. Now, the scary thing about them playing our deck um, means that if we do go to board wipe, we have to worry about the number of Cruel Celebrants they have versus the number we have, and all of that, uh, you know, yada yada shenanigans. Ayara. Ayara is actually a really good card that would fit well in this deck, but I only have one copy, and, it, you know, Ayara is kind of a card you can slot into any deck and all that, and be, be okay, I suppose. Any, any deck that has heavy black. Now, three-color deck, you're probably pushing your luck a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and get down the Cauldron Familiar, Ors of Enforcer, and Witches of Enforcer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're playing your deck. <laughs> You're playing ours. Somebody's playing somebody's something. Alright, so Corpse Knight, get in those damages. Bring them, bring them down level to us, will ya? It's only fair. And there's a Witches of to show you that I care. <laughs> Nice. It is nice. Thank you. Yes. I, I realized you were playing our deck. Uh, hello. <laughs> okay, so turn five, you decide to say hello. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, I realized they were playing our deck as soon as I saw the, the Orzhov color theme and the familiar in Witch's Oven. Like, yeah, you're not playing a food deck now, are you? <laughs> Alright, so they're going to be doing their combo, we're going to be trying to do ours. We're going to hope we can find our Midnight Reaper with relative quickness, because otherwise they're just going to get this huge card advantage, and, uh, well, you know what they say about card advantage, right? It's, it's really good. <laughs> Anyways, our opponent seems to be maybe stuck at four mana, but they just got a taste of it, so... <laughs> That's rough as fuck. They're like drawing the cards we want to draw. Although we did get two Corpse Knights, right? We we have part of the combo that they want, and they have part of the combo that we want. Together, we could have one kick-ass board state, right? If, uh, if MTG Arena ever does 2v2, hint, hint, wink, wink, that would be fantastic. Especially since they have things like uh, 
like all those cards that are based off the number of opponents you have now like why you know why why tease us like that you're gonna give us multiplayer games or not there's a there's a card that creates rats based on the amount of opponents you're you have right but it doesn't doesn't really play well in arena because you only ever have one opponent anyways we're gonna be doing this little combo ourselves hoping our opponent can't absolutely destroy us too quickly so we'll take them down to 15 we'll go back up to 14 not too bad of a deficit there Who's dealing more damage each turn? Dirk Rule Celebrate procs twice, Mon procs once, but my Corpse Knights proc twice as well. Ooh, Spark Harvest. Okay, this is an interesting one. It's either take out the Taser or take out the Cruel Celebrant. Alright, or take out the Midnight Reaper. But that's just their card draw. The Cruel Celebrant is really key here. So I think I am just going to Spark Harvest. Tesla could be so deadly though. Alright. Let's let's take out Tesla. I've convinced myself. Cruel Celebrant is bad, don't get me wrong. But Tesa Tesa makes the next Cruel Celebrant they play bad as well, to whether it's now if they play another Cruel Celebrant, it's sure it's basically like I never removed the Tesa, but it's not like everything else is gonna get double the effect as well, such as Midnight Reaper and all that, yada yada. Okay, so now is the part where you use Witch's Oven on your Tesa instead of your, uh, instead of your Cauldron. Or, I didn't even think about that. That's pretty good as well, huh? Yeah, Yara, Yara would be dope in this deck. Maybe I should have played her. See? See what I mean? There's so many good cards in Orzhov that's like... You can't possibly play every every good card in Orzhov. There's too many. Okay, they're sacrificing their cat. Oh, they, they want to get the procs off the Tesa before I kill her, right? And then they're going to Witch's Oven. That's smart. Alright, then Witch's Oven on the Tesa. Nice! So our opponent's got a pretty good deck here, although I will have to say it's, it's partly due to the fact that they have the Midnight Reaper and got it out so early that they're able to get this huge card advantage on us. Um, but, you know, hey, what, what can you do when you're playing a mirror deck? <laughs> Alright. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Mirror matches. So fun. So nice. I'm actually kind of glad we're playing a mirror match here because it shows shows you all a lot of good cards that, well, <laughs> the only card they've actually played that we don't have in our deck is a Yara, so I'm going to say it shows you all a lot of good cards that I don't have that y'all might, you know, want to pick up. But to be completely honest, yeah, they, <laughs> they're playing our deck, bro. It's not cool. That's okay, though. If I, if I lose to my own deck, is it really a loss, or is it just me showing y'all a victory from a different angle? You know? Who knows? Who knows? I'm just kidding. It's, it's still a loss, but I don't feel bad about it, you know? Because it's just like, hey, guys, y'all want to see an awesome combo? Oh, well, yeah, I guess you could always watch my opponent, too. <laughs> yeah, so the Ayara. Nice, nice addition. It's a little, little costly, and granted, we wouldn't have even been able to get it down this, this game, right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Like, sure, Yara is nice and all that, and I would have loved to have had a Midnight Reaper to draw some fucking guards for me. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't, and so we're. I think we're gonna die here. Sadly enough, our our opponent just drew the better hand. So it is what it is. Um, you know. It's uh, it's a mirror match. Sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. That's just, it's just how it is. Now, in best of three, mirror matches are a lot easier. Or I wouldn't say a lot easier, right? Because then you're you're both trying to counter what you think your opponent will be sideboarding for. But it does make things a little bit more interesting. So, nonetheless, we'll move on into a game two after that uh, rather interesting game one. Cavist, Cavist day? Not quite sure. 
nonetheless, moving on into a game two here. This looks like a solid hand. We get to go first. I'm going to go ahead and pay two, actually, here. It's basically like we only paid one, because we're going to get down the cauldron familiar. So, fair deal. Fair deal. What do we want to see? What do we want to see? Scorch Spitter. Not that. That's for damn sure. Anything but that. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and play our planes and get down our cruel celebrants. And we will actually go in all attack, because they're not going to block with the Scorch Bitter from my Cauldron Familiar, so get in get in that tasty damage, you little kitty cat. I like how the cat is coming up upon this, like, I can't tell if it's like a, the end of a staff or a spear or what. Do we care to block this? Yeah. Okay, so they, they were kind of bluffing there, right? Attacking, swinging in. Thinking they could get away with it. Yeah. Try again. Try, try again. Alright, so we're going to get in two more damage here. They're down to 16. Who knew Cruel Celebrants can actually take your opponent out with their little one damage? Pew pew! <laughs> it's the, uh, the sound I imagine it makes. Cavalcade of Calamity. Alright, so do we just murder a Strider their shit here? Part of me says yes. The other part says save it. Just save it. So we're going to go and swing all in here. If they had a shock, they would play it. That's why I'm not too worried about, like, oh, they might have shotguns or whatever, you know? If they got it, they're going to kill our stuff. But I think we're going to be a, a little too quick for this mono red baby bag bullshit. Do I want to take out the Scorch Spitter? I think so. Scorch Spitter, proccing twice, not really that nice. Or I can take out Grim Initiate. Yeah, I'm going to take out the Grim Initiate. It has first strike, fuck it. I don't care. It, it's like a coin toss as to which one would be better. But here's the thing, the Grim Initiate will always block our Cauldron Familiar. So. Can't be having that, considering it's one of our only sources of damage right now. <clears throat> Try and just Spitfire. This is why we have two Murderous Knights, right? Murderous Riders, whatever they're called. So, then this turn, we cannot attack. And when it comes to their turn, we'll have to make sure to play our other Murderous Rider before, uh, before they go to swing in with their attackers. Which is a little unfortunate, because it means that they may not swing in with their 1-1. One, one. So then, do I wait? Or do I just go ahead and play it here? I think I go ahead and play it here. Alright, so we equal on health. Do they swing in? That is the question. If they do, they're going to lose both their creatures and their entire board state. And I think they know that. Yeah. Okay. Now we can play our Cauldron Familiar. Gain us a little bit more life. Get down to Murderous Rider, which again has lifelink, so we'll be gaining a little bit of life. And I think we're fine to swing in here, honestly. If they want to double block to take out a Cruel Celebrant, I'll kill their Scorch Spitter. All will be well. If they want to block like that, that's fine. Still procs my uh, Cruel Celebrants twice. So, yeah. honestly, it's it's going pretty well. We're we're just sort of nickel and diamond them all the way down, but you know, some sometimes that's how the games go. Alright, so there goes the shock, so we're gonna hit him for four more. No, just two more. I'm sorry, just two. <laughs> Getting excited. But hey, we're all the way back up to 18 health, right? That's fantastic. We're down to 13, back up to 18. We're doing pretty well. Now, I think this cavalcade deck sort of fizzled out a little bit. Sure, they have experimental frenzy, but uh, I, I think we'll be able to pull it out. Might have to bite, bite my tongue, but we shall see. Command the Dread Horde. Well, I'm going to need the game to give me uh, give me some more land if it's going to give me all this costly stuff, right? So we'll swing all in again, and if they want to... Oh, maybe I shouldn't have swung them with the Cruel Celebrant. Well, it doesn't matter. They're going to let it ride. So that's that's nice. Do they take out my Cauldron Familiar here, or do they deal the damage to the face? Probably Cauldron Familiar, if I had to guess about it, right? Yeah. That's okay. We'll proc Cruel Celebrant. They're down to three. So they gotta play a creature. Um, and they gotta hope that we don't hit any removal, right? 
Well, no, yeah, they got to hit a creature and they can't kill any of my creatures. I think this game's over. I think Kavist, Kavist is uh, is done. We're still at 21. They don't have any way to gain life because it's mono red cavalcade. I think it's just uh, a GG here. You can't play those cards. You have Experimental Frenzy. You can only play the one on top of your deck. So Fun fun, I know, right? Interesting deck they have there, though. Trying to use Experimental Frenzy in a in the Cavalcade deck. It's interesting. So we'll go ahead and get down the Warzoth Enforcer and the Hunter Witness. And we don't even have to worry about a Flame Sweep here. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, because if they try and Flame Sweep us, they will literally kill themselves. So, awesome. Game two, sure, we nickeled and dimed them, and we didn't even use the Cauldron Familiar, which is up in cool. All, all that combo, but it was still nice to get the win and to, to take down Mono Red Cavalcade. So on into a game three. One Sempronio. One Sempronio. It's a weird name. Anyways, on into our match number three, where we're going to try and pick up a, a spicy victory. Hopefully, we can actually have some luck with our starter hand this time. Slash the cards we draw. It seems like most matches we are in an uphill battle. This seems great. This seems fantastic. If we can draw, draw into some decent cards, which we do have the Midnight Reaper to try and help us, um, I think we'll be sitting pretty good. So our opponent's going to be playing some flowers. That's okay. Plant them up. Watch them grow. Just don't forget to water them and all that. Now, the fact that we have all tap lands is not fantastic. Not fantastic in the least bit. Maybe these common lands aren't as... Aren't as... Uh, Overwhelmingly top is what uh, I would like to make them out to be. Who knows? Amara coming down early. Not good for us because the first creature we play is not even able to defend Amara. So they're going to go ahead and get down that 1-1 that one, one lifelinker. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit unfortunate. I think next turn we do go ahead and play the Warzone Enforcer. Uh, given we don't draw into an undead lane. And can can put down the Midnight Reaper. So if we can put down Midnight Reaper, I think we definitely should. Kaya's Wrath. That could be really good for us. That could be really, really good for us. So, do I want Cruel Celebrant or Orzhov Enforcer? If I throw down Cruel Celebrant, they just swing in with their Amara again, right? But if I throw down Orzhov Enforcer, hopefully it stops, stops the damage for the time being. And I don't believe I want to swing in with a Cauldron Familiar here. Something tells me that they they have plenty of ways of gaining tokens. So making that trade is not not exactly valuable for us. Raise the alarm. Okay, sure. Cover the board. I'm going to be using Kaya's Wrath. <laughs> and honestly, if I don't play anything next turn, we can get a big old Kaya's Wrath out without losing too much. Or we could go ahead and play Midnight Reaper next turn, and then that way when we do Kaya's Wrath, we, uh, hey, bro, era, Elder. It's a little interesting. Um, but yeah, that way when we do Kai's Wrath, we get to draw some cards, and we have a little bit better line of defense. I kind of like that, so that's, uh, that's what we're going with here. Ensure we're not getting the double Cruel Celebrant procs off, but at the same time, we're saving Cruel Celebrants. Yeah, play your Tulsa Mayor. Play everything. Don't kill my Midnight Reaper. Don't, don't do it. Don't, no, 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 damn it. I wanted three cards drawn off of that card. You hear me? Not just one, but three. Now, whatever they swing in with here, we're obviously going to block. Um, no, nope, no swing in. Okay, so, then we just play this little number. We have three cruel celebrants in there. That's crazy. Absolutely bonkers, actually. So, I guess our our next turn is gonna be cruel into cruel, and then cruel into Orzov, right? I don't believe Cavalier and Flower. Okay, so what are we looking for here? Tesa. Tesa is really, really good. I think I do want to go cruel first, though. Right now, Tasis doesn't have an effect. However, Cruel, Cruel does have an effect. 
Um, yeah, we're actually going to go ahead and swing in here because I'm not going to block the Conclave Cavalier this turn. If I block it any, it would be after I get down the other Cruel Celebrant and the Taser, right? So no blocks. And uh, we could have went Cruel and Orzhov Enforcer, and I feel like that might have put us up with a, a bit better of a defense. That's okay. We're, we're learning as we go here. So we're going to go Cruel Celebrant, Orzhov Enforcer. Next turn we can go Taysa into Hunted Witness as well. So that'll be nice. Um, and we can go ahead and swing in with this 1-1 one -one again, because I'd rather not block this turn. If I can wait and get down Taysa, then I have six procs for every one creature that dies. That'll be <laughs> outstanding, right? So if we can make it this turn, preferable. If not... I always have the Aurors off. Enforcer can take out something, so we'll, we'll we'll see. I would love to draw into a Witch's Oven just so I can get this this combo going, right? Especially if we're gonna have Tasa and three copies of Cruel Celebrant. This game's gonna be over in a jiffy. <laughs> that is, if our opponent can decide which of the two cards he, they want to play. Sorry. Sympronio. Is that, is that something? Is, does that stand for something? Is that a, an object or a, a name for something that I don't know about? Some Pronia? So many names out there nowadays, gamer tags, all, all this stuff that people can create. So you see a lot of interesting ones. And some that enlighten you as to things that you never even knew existed before. Um, our opponent is... I, I don't know if they're roping us or maybe they just got up and went away. Uh, Either way, I, I'm not not happy with it. Sympronio, come on. Come on back. Please. Por favor. I beg you, kind sir. Oh, don't tell me they're just disconnected. That's such a lame way to win. After we were having such an awesome game, we managed to get the Cruel Celebrants and the Tasa and all that. This is honestly such a lame, lame thing. Lame, lame, lame. Maybe Sympronio will come back. Maybe they won't rope us for the rest of the game. Maybe they did just accidentally get disconnected, and maybe they'll be right back. You know, who knows? Who knows? Sympronio probably knows, right? Probably the only person that really knows right now. Them and any immediate, you know, people within the space. <sighs> Alright, well, I'm still going to keep up with what I was, what I was planning. Although, yeah, it seems like they're just going to get conceded out here. Uh, oh, no, no! Hey, hey, they're back! Yes, Sympronio! Nice to have you back. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Maybe they did just get disconnected. a boy, Sympronio. a boy. Or girl. a person. a person. <laughs> Alright, so we're back in it. I feel, I feel bad now. They missed a whole turn. Hmm. We all say we, we skip our next turn, give them a chance to make it up. Maybe we should have skipped this turn, give them a chance to make it up. Right, just straight up skipped it, not played anything. Um, so yeah, I think this is in order. I don't want to kill their Conclave Cavalier quite yet. And then we play it back to the film. Awesome, awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I assumed that they were going to concede, which is why I was like, oh, you know, maybe they conceded and magic glitched out and it didn't, like register them conceding instead it registered them disconnecting and so that maybe that's where the problem lied but uh apparently they just got distracted and then came back and were uh then deciding hey you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna concede to this so thanks everybody for watching that's gonna do it for today's video i hope you all enjoyed this super awesome super spicy combo um and if you have any comments or any of that you can leave them down below as always i'll see y'all either later tonight or tomorrow peace